Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm excited to revisit the Elementor Mega Menu widget. In a previous video, I covered the alpha release and I talked about some accessibility concerns that I had, which I raised in a bug report. I'll leave a link to the bug report in the description below so you can go ahead and check it out. I'm excited to tell you that Elementor has listened to some of those concerns and they've made some changes in Elementor 3.20. So that's what we're going to be looking at in today's video and we'll check if there's any other accessibility concerns that we want to raise, we'll mention it and hopefully Elementor will implement those and will create a better product. So if you are excited, then stick around and we'll jump right into it. I'll start by showcasing a completed mega menu, which was created using the Elementor menu widget and a few custom tweaks of my own. Then, I will go through a four-point checklist to make sure that it is accessible enough. Then we'll go back and check the Elementor settings and we'll go through each of them to know what each of the settings does. Then finally, I'll use the Adam Low checklist to point out any accessibility concerns and anything that Elementor did right. So if you are interested, then let's continue. Before we continue, I just want to emphasize two things. One, I am passionate about accessibility but I'm not yet a certified expert. So all my recommendations will be based on research and my personal opinion. Secondly, the mega menu is quite complex and there is not an official standard yet for how the mega menu should operate. So there might be some differing opinions. And if you have any newer research, please leave it in the comments. I would like to know your research and your opinions so that we can come up with a better solution. And with that out of the way, let's go on to the four-point checklist. The four-point checklist is actually a five-point checklist and it involves one, the visual test, followed by the automated test, then the keyboard test, then we'll do a screen reader testing, and finally, we we'll do a user testing. So that's where we get external users who are professionals or everyday users to test and see if everything works out well. But in this case, we don't have an external user, so we're just going to focus on the four-point test. So we'll start with the visual test. And basically, all we're thinking about is, can it be identified and can it be interacted with? And is there anything broken? So those are the things we're just looking for. So can the mega menu be identified? I'll say yes, because it's at the top of the page, which is following convention, and it is having some separation. So it tells us that those things are links that can be clicked. Then we need to know that, okay, when we interact with it, can we interact? Yes, there is something changing. First, the icon of the mouse changes to the hand icon and we get the actual visual change on the link. So it gives you an underline. Basically, we should not rely on colors for these changes because if you're relying solely on colors, people who are colorblind will be lost because someone might see a blue color and a black color and think that they are the same thing. So it might be difficult for them to differentiate. So don't only rely on colors. Make sure you add something extra. That way some people will put an underline. Some put something like a square or a rectangle. Some people will put something just to showcase that there is a visual change when we hover over a link. Then we also have another thing to identify that there is a drop down which is the icon so that makes us know that okay it is something different from the other links so when we hover over that we get the drop down the next thing we need to know that okay this drop down can we interact with the drop down so if we go in does the drop down disappear when we're trying to go into the sub menu no it doesn't disappear and the links within the drop down are also identifiable so we get whenever we hover over them we get this hover state Ideally, the links should have some kind of maybe something to make us know that those are links. But typically, we expect that things within the mega menu are things that should be able to be clicked. But yeah, that may be something I failed. They're supposed to be easily identifiable as links. So we've finished with that. Then we'll go ahead and start testing out all the links to make sure that there's nothing broken. So let me go to the first link. See, it works. Let me go back up can click on the second link, see it works, and so on and so forth. When we hover, we can click on one of the links here, one of them will work. And yeah, 
that's it for the visual test. Basically, you have to make sure that it is identifiable and that it is able to be interacted with and the interactions should be known to the user. When they click, they should know that they've clicked on something. When they can click on something, they should know. That's why we also tell people to avoid underlining things that are not links. So like, let's say you have this heading now, you shouldn't go ahead to underline a heading if it cannot be interacted with. For this one, it can be ignored because it actually has an interaction. When you hover over it, it gives you an abbreviation and tells you what it is, a tooltip. So that can be ignored. But let's say for your product, don't go ahead to start underlining your product if it's not a link. Because visually, people have associated underlines with links. So they will get confused when they see a text having an underline, but it's not a link. So try to avoid that. So now that we're done with the visual tests, we'll go ahead to the second test, which is the keyboard testing. So I'll go over to the search bar. Then I'll start tabbing. Basically, we want to tab through all the links to make sure that we can get to the links and that it is visually seen that we can get to the links. So when we tab through, you can see that visual indication using the rectangle around the product that tells us that we are on the product link. If we tab again, we know that, okay, we're on the button and the button should be able to be interacted with. To interact with the button, if it's coded well, we can use either the space bar or the enter key. So let's press the space bar and see if it's working. Yeah, it's working. If we press the enter, yeah, it closes. So they are working. So let me press the space bar again. We should be able to interact with the submenus within that drop down. So let's press the tab key to see if you can focus on the first focusable element within the drop down. So tab. And yes, there is a visual indication, which is still that outline. And when we tab through, we are getting to all the links successfully. The next thing is that when we press the escape key, it should go back to the button that triggered the drop down. So let's press the escape key and it goes back to that button. So that works well. And then we can tap through to the other links. The reason why it skipped the compare is because compare doesn't have a link attached to it. Only the button has a link. So you might be wondering why it skipped compare. Then the links itself, so resources, if we click on it, it should take us to the resources section. But if we click on the button, so let me go back to the button, it should open the drop down. So that works. And there is a visual indication. So that also works. So that's it for the keyboard testing. The next thing we need to do is do the automated testing. So I should have done that before the keyboard testing. But for that one, there are so many tools. Specifically for WordPress, I will leave a link to it. There is one by Equalize Digital, which helps you to basically go through your page and pick out errors in your page and show you what those errors are, especially the pro version. I'll leave a link to the free version in the description. Then there are other tools you can use, which are mostly Chrome extensions. One of them, which is very popular, is the Axe Dev Tools, as well as the Wave Evaluation Tool. So I'll use the Wave in this case. And you see, it shows that there are zero errors and zero contrast errors. So we know that we are safe from that angle. Then we can close this one. Then we can also use other tools like the headings map, although it's not that important for a menu, but you can use that. That shows you basically a list of all the headings that are currently on your page. And if there's any error, it will show you a red sign that helps you to know when there is a heading that is out of order. So you can now fix those headings. Although any heading before the H1 is usually ignored. So typically in your mega menus, you might have like H2s and H3s, but once it goes back to the main section, that will now start with an H1 and go from there. So that's it for the automated testing. The last test is the screen reader test. For that one, I prefer to use NVDA. There's also VoiceOver and JAWS, but the most popular one is NVDA because most screen readers, when you ask, they tend to use NVDA and they also like to use the Firefox browser. So those are the things that a lot of them use. So for this test, I'll be using NVDA. So let me open NVDA. So now NVDA is opened. 
So I'll go straight to the top of the page using Control Home. Link skip. So I'm on the skip to main content. It's not showing because I used the Control Home to show it. There are four ways or even multiple ways that screen reader and assistive technology users can navigate to your navigation menu, especially if your menu is coded properly. So the first way is using landmark regions, which I'll show you now. Just press the D key. Banner landmark. I've gone to the banner landmark. Then I press the D key again. Primary navigation landmark menu toggle grouping list with seven items product link. So it tells me that is the primary navigation landmark and I'm already in the navigation. There are seven items because the way I coded it is that all seven items are actually within the mega menu and they're all the parent links. So that's one way we can go to your navigation. So make sure that you have the nav element attached to your navigation. That's what the assistive technology is using to get to the nav. The other way we can do is the same traditional way using the tab key. So I'll go back to the top of the page again. Out of list, out of grouping, link skip. So I'm back to the skip to main content. So I'll now use the tab key. Banner landmark, Davden home visited link. Just to show you that the skip to content link is working, I'll press the shift tab. Skip to content link. So that's actually working. So let me, let me continue. So tab key again. Banner landmark, Davden home visited link. Okay. Primary navigation landmark list clickable with seven items product visited link. So now it tells us I'm on the product link. If I go to the next one. Open product menu button collapsed sub menu. It says open product button collapsed sub menu. So now let me press the space bar or enter key to make sure that it's actually working with screen readers because oftentimes I've seen that it works with keyboard, but the moment you activate a screen reader, the buttons do not work anymore. So let's see. Expanded. So this works. So I can expand. If I press the tab key. Core features list with six items design and build link. It basically tells me the first grouping I'm in and tells me the link name. So that works. Then I can skip to the next set of links by just pressing the L key. Advanced features list with four items dynamic data link. Because there are multiple ways, like I said, that people can skip links. One is by lists. The other one is by navigation then by focusable elements, and then by elements itself. So let's now see how we can get to this navigation using just link shortcuts. So I'll go back, control home. Out of list link, skip to content. Then to get to the menu again, I'll just press the L key. So let me move my mouse away. So just press the L key. No next list. Okay, let me press control home so I'm sure that I'm at the top. Link skip to content. So I'm at the top of the page now. If I press the L key, I should get to the list because your navigation should be marked up as a list. So press the L key. Banner landmark primary navigation landmark list clickable with seven items product visited link. So you see, I get to that list as well. So there are so many ways that a screen reader user can get to your list. So that's why they tell you to make sure that you code your HTML properly because you can never predict all the ways that a screen reader user will interact with your page. There are so many different ways, which I'll show you one way now, which will break this navigation. So I'll press Control Home again. Out of list link, skip to content. And this time I'll use the element by element navigation. So that's pressing the down arrow key. Banner landmark visited link Davden home. Primary navigation landmark list clickable with seven items visited link product. So I see I'm there. If I press the, the down arrow key again, Menu button collapse sub menu open product. So I'm on the menu button. So if I press enter key, close product expanded. Expanded. But here comes the big problem. If I press the down arrow key, I should still get into the sub menu. But watch what happens. Clickable compare. I cannot get into the sub menu because the menu was not coded properly. The drop down list is not actually attached inside the list item. They were actually using JavaScript to shift focus from the top level items to get to the drop down items. So for screen reader users who use the down arrow and up arrow keys, they will not be able to access the sub menu. So that's already a fail, which also affects mobile screen reader users because it's not only desktop users that use screen readers. I use TalkBack when I'm on my phone because I also have a visual impairment. So sometimes I use TalkBack. So when I'm using TalkBack, I cannot access the sub menu because of how it was coded. 
but then it can be fixed but it might be quite complex to fix it so i don't know how elementor are going to fix that one so yeah that's it for the testing now i'll go ahead and show you the elementor settings then we'll go through the adam lowe's longer checklist to make sure that everything that can be fixed will be mentioned and then elementor will fix those issues so let's jump right into the elementor settings before we jump into the elementor settings these were the tweaks that i used so i'll go ahead and deactivate them now one was for anchor links because elementor's anchor link js has some issues then we had for those last two buttons to be buttons i would deactivate that then there was something for the mobile menu i didn't show that then there was an issue with area current whenever you use anchor links i was not sure if area current should be there which i will show you in the checklist so let's deactivate all of them and then when we're going through the adam low checklist i will point out some of the issues so now that we've deactivated those i'll go ahead and open the elementor settings now the widget we're using today is the menu widget and you have to activate it under elementor settings and then features and then it requires the flexbox container and the nested elements to work so once you have those active, you can go ahead and follow along with the video. So now let me go back to the edit screen. So here we have the Elementor widget. You can create a new widget by clicking on the plus icon and then just searching for menu. And you no longer use this WordPress menu, but you now use this new menu widget. It uses nested elements so that you can nest one element within another element. So that's where we have this nested element. Let me click on it. So now I'm on the edit menu. The first thing we are presented with is the content area. And that's where we added the layout. So basically what we're adding here is the list of top level items. So as you can see the product, that's the product and the rest of them. Then when you open each of them up, you have some options. You can change the title, you can give it a link. In this case, I'm just using hashtag product and just giving them hash links. Then you can choose if you want it to just be single element or you want it to have a drop down content. If I deactivate it, then the drop down disappears and it just becomes a single link like we have for the documentation and the rest of them. Then if you want to add an icon, this is where you can add an icon to the top level element. So we can just add a random icon. So I'll just go to icons. And just pick a random one and you see we get our icon there but we don't need it in this case so let me go ahead and hide it so that's how we have that icon then the next thing we have is to define the width of the container so when we drop down do we want the content width to be full width or do we want it to basically adjust to the width of the content for me what I did was I set it to full width, but since I know the width of my box content area, I just basically defined that for each of the drop-down content. That's why it gave me that same box area, although I set it to full width. So because I just wanted everything to have as much space as possible. If you set it to the other one, which is fit to content, then it will shrink to the size of your content. So that's it. Then we can choose the layout if we want it to be horizontal, or we want it to be like a drop down so basically from your tablet mobile and desktop all of them will drop down but i don't want that i want the parent one should be the standard menu because while we're supposed to follow standard people don't ideally associate with seeing drop down content they will hardly ever click on that drop down for a desktop menu they prefer to see everything laid out plain for your desktop menu only when you don't have enough space in the mobile menu that's where you start to show the hamburger menu so try i know people like to use modern design and things like that but you should still try to follow convention because you are making a lot of people get confused when you are trying to put that drop down icon because not many people will click on that drop down icon so you might be losing conversion without even realizing it so that's it for that level then the next one is the item positioning so you can choose whether you want it to be centered, you want it to be aligned to the start or aligned to the end. Because I was doing that login and 
the other button to be at the edge. That's why I just make sure everything's aligned to the edge and then I just pushed the login away from the other sets of the menus. But in this case, you may not need that. So that's, you can leave it at the end. You also have for tablets, mobile and desktop. So you can change. Whenever you see this icon that shows the desktop sign, that means it is a responsive setting. That means you can set something different for mobile that will be different from the tablet and so on and so forth. Then the next thing is how do you want the drop downs to show? If you want to use your own custom SVG, you can choose your custom SVG, but I'll just leave it at the default, which is this one down to make sure that it is going downward and the active one is basically up. So then the next thing is the drop down effect. We can choose two settings. Do we want it to open on hover or on click? When we choose click, then the menu will only open on click, not on hover. So let me just leave it at hover because that's what ideally most people use hover. Then we can choose the animation because I left it to be abrupt that it just shows up. You might want to delay it so that, let me set a fade in and then say 200 seconds. Let's publish it. And now let me preview it. It will look a bit weirder, but most of the things should still work. So see it now. It takes that 200 milliseconds before the menu opened. Before it's just opening abruptly, but now you just want it to open after 200 milliseconds. And that's where we get our menu. Then the next option is for the menu toggle itself. What do we want the menu toggle? So let me just go to something like this level. That's where you can see this is the menu toggle. Do we want it to be centered? Do you want it to be at the start? Or do you want it to be at the end? Typically, I want it to be at the end. So I'll just set it to be at the end from desktop so that wherever breakpoint it has, it's just stick to that end. Then you can now choose your icons for when it is opened and when it is closed. So basically, when it is in normal state, you can choose this icon. Active state, it has this X icon. Then for hover, you can do some other animations and things like that. And finally, in the advanced settings, that's where you can choose. Do you want the menu to still remain always horizontal and then just become a scroll? Or do you want it to change to the drop down content when it becomes a bit smaller? So it now becomes the hamburger menu. So for here, I just choose that from the tablet breakpoint, it should change to the hamburger menu because we have a lot of link items at the top. We don't want it to be all squished up at the top of the page. So that's it for the content area. Then the style tab, the first one is the menu items themselves. So that's the top level menu items. This is where we style them. You can add some space in between them because in my previous video, I mentioned that sometimes people who have like dexterity issues, like someone who has Parkinson's or some other conditions, they might not be easy to click on links so you want to give them enough clickable area that's what google always tells you that minimum clickable area is not reached or something like that so you have to make sure that you have a minimum area that the user can click so there should be enough space for the user's hand to be able to click around the link and it should not accidentally click on the other link you should have enough space to click on the link that he wants to click on then that's where we have all this space in between then this is the distance from the content so when you have this drop down content do you want it to be a bit further down or up i just set it to zero it all depends on how you want it then we have the typography settings you can change the typography but this is where i'll just mention one of the problems that elementor has basically you can't add an underline to your active state because the typography is not controlled on different states it is basically a universal control so you see i can change the colors i can change other things but i cannot change the typography so i cannot give it like a text underline when it is on hover so that's a minor issue that i keep having with elementor it's an easy fix using css but it should be possible to just add because right now since i deactivated all of my tweaks you no longer have those underline and we shouldn't only rely on colors to show change of states, basically. So that's it for this one. 
Then we can add in some background for the drop down content. You can say we want background colors and some other things like the padding as well. This is where we add some padding. That's why you see around it, even after I pass the menu, it is still highlighted because I added some padding around the link, which is a good idea to have some space around the link so that if the user mistakenly clicks, what than I just having to mostly click on the text, you might have some at least some wiggle room to click somewhere around the text and still get the link. Then we have other options which you can explore for icons. So this is when we add in the icon here. You can change those icons using these settings. Then we have the drop down indicator, which is this small carrot. You can change the size and other options there. Then the menu toggle is for the mobile menu. So when we get to this breakpoint, this is the menu toggle. We can change the size of the toggle button and some other settings there. And yeah, that's it for the drop down menu. We can change some options for the menu as well. So Elementor gives a quite a bit of settings. The thing is that I was wishing that Elementor would be able to give us the option that whenever we have mega menu, the same way we have in like bricks, where we can choose a couple of options. We can choose that we just want to have a set of links as my drop down, or we can choose that we want to have a mega menu. So it has that toggle. If you want it to be mega menu content, you toggle it on. If you want it to just be a set of drop down links, I can just get a set of other links rather than having to now put an icon list widget or a HTML widget or whatever widget I have, which now causes some issues because some people now fall into the error of putting a WordPress menu into the mega menu, which is not correct because the mega menu already has the nav uh, element on it. You cannot nest a nav element within another nav element. It will not be good for assistive technologies. So basically, we cannot use the WordPress menu inside of the mega menu unless Elementor has a way of removing the nav tag from the WordPress menu, which I don't think they will do. So make sure that you're not using the WordPress menu inside of the mega menu. So now that we are done with showcasing all the options here, we now go ahead and showcase the checklist and I'll point out all the issues and the concerns that I have and hopefully Elementor will fix some of those concerns. So let me now publish this and we'll go to the front end and we'll start the test from there. To make it work properly, I'll just make sure that I copy just the link and open it in an incognito mode. So here we are in the incognito mode. We'll be doing the test using the Adam Low checklist. I've already gone ahead and I've broken it down to simple chunks for myself and I've written it down in paper. So I'll be following the checklist and I'll be pointing out any accessibility concerns that I find along the way. So for the first set of tests, it's going to be based on the HTML structure itself. So the four things that we need to check are, one, is it structured as a list? Two, is it enclosed within a nav element? Then three, the submenu items, are they contained within the list item? So let's say we have this is a list item. These submenu items, they should be directly below the trigger button. Then the fourth thing we need to know is that the button that triggers the submenu, it has to be a button, not an A tag or whatever div or something. If it's a div, then it has to have a role equal to button. It tells the screen reader that this is the button. So now let's go ahead and test it. We'll go and inspect it. So right click, click on inspect. I've zoomed it in so that it's easy to see. So let's check for the whole thing now. So first let's check, is it within a list? Yes, it has a UL tag. So yes, it's within a list. And the list has list items. So each of them is a list item within this list. Then the entire list is wrapped within a nav tag. We also have the mobile hamburger menu at the top here, which is correct so that when it gets to the mobile breakpoint, this mobile menu button can be triggered. And basically the focus will flow properly from the button to the list of items. So that is the correct way. 
then the next thing we need to see is that the button that triggers the submenu has to be labeled as a button. So let's check. Inside the list, first it has an A tag for this top menu, which is correct. Then we have a button tag. So that is also correct to trigger the drop down button. Uh, but the problem is that after the drop down button, there should be the sub menu directly under it so that when we shift focus using the tab key, it can just go directly from the A tag to the button. When we trigger the button, the tab key should down go to the sub menu. But unfortunately, the sub menu is not directly underneath it. It is somewhere at the bottom, which down causes a problem which I showed in the beginning, whereby if a screen reader user or a safety technology user does not use the tab key, then he has no way to access the drop down menu because it's only listening for the tab key. So ideally, Elementor has to move each of the sub menu items to be directly underneath the button. Or uh, otherwise, it's only good for some certain users, but not good for other users. So now we are finished with the HTML structure. We'll now go to the visual test. So let me close this up. For the visual test, the first thing we need to do is make sure that the menu items are visually identifiable as navigation items. I already did a quick rundown of this in the beginning where I said usually the menu items are at the top of the page. So that's what helps us identify that it is a menu item. And you can see visually we have the menu items. But now this is where the accessibility failure comes in. There is no way to add a underline because Elementor does not give us that option to add an underline to our links. It's either going to add the underline for everything, both on hover, focus, and everything, or not. There's no way to individually choose that we want it to have an underline when it's on hover state or things like that. So that's one of the issues that I found. If there is a way to do it without custom CSS, please leave it in the comment section. I would like to know. For now, I will call that a slight failure. We also need to make sure that the common menu item is in focus. For this use case, there is none that is the current menu item, so that can be skipped. But ideally, you'll have like home here, and then if it's on the home page, that home should be highlighted, maybe with a thicker color, maybe a box shadow or something like that to make it look a bit darker. Because once it looks thicker, we can identify a little bit that this is different from the other menu items, not just by color, but by thickness or by an underline or by a kind of like a rectangle around it. So those are the things that we can use to identify elements that are different from other elements. Then the next thing is to make sure that there is enough space to support people that have that dexterity issues. So is there enough space for the user to be able to click? So I think the clickable area is quite wide enough for a user to click on the link without having to mistakenly click on another link. So I'll give that a pass, you see. Because the text itself is quite large, that's why the link, and then I added some padding around it just in case. So that's a pass from me. I don't know if you think it's different, please leave it in the comment section. Then the next step is to check at 400% to make sure that nothing is broken visually. So let's go into plus. Let me move my mouse away. It doesn't accidentally hover. So let's go to 400%. So ideally at 400%, it's basically like a mobile menu. So let me click on it. And you see, it is not like anything stuck. This is where you have problems when you put like sticky header. Sometimes the sticky header will now cause problems that you can no longer scroll to the bottom of the page, especially when you use like fixed or sticky header or something like that. Basically, you'll not be able to scroll anymore. Sometimes you'll be scrolling the bottom of the page but the menu itself will just be stuck. So that's one thing you need to watch out for, that at 400%, you should be able to still access all of the drop-down content. You see, I can access the, the drop-down content. I can open the next one and access it. And everything just works well. I think ideally, it shouldn't be opening on the hover for this breakpoint. I think once it gets to this point, it should only open on click. But I think... It, for now, it opens both on click and hover. So maybe Elementor should check this out that once it moves into that mobile menu kind of structure, 
then the hover should be deactivated. It should mostly work on click because the hover becomes very weird. It can lead to some undesirable clicking. So that's it. Then let me go back to 100%. And the next thing is that once we are hovering over the parent item and then we hover into the submenu, the submenu should not just disappear because there's that problem, which I'll show you here. When we go through like this, it tends to like lose focus. But if you see maybe like Apple's menu, let me use Apple as an example. If you see when we hover, if we go any direction, it will not disappear. Basically, they use a kind of delay so that the submenu does not disappear. So we should try to add like a maybe a one second delay before the submenu disappears so that users don't lose the submenu. I think that might be something that they have to look into. And people talk about, I can't remember what it's called, the triangle, that when a user's mouse is anywhere, it should create a kind of triangle for the focus so that once a user goes in that triangle, it shouldn't disappear. But when a user goes like horizontal, then the link should basically disappear. I think I can't remember what it's called, but I saw it on Twitter once where the person was showcasing how it works. Basically, whenever your mouse is hovering over a link, it creates a triangle state of hover so that once you go through that triangle, your mouse does not basically disappear. Maybe that's something that Elementor can look into. So, for now, that's the problem that a lot of people complain about on GitHub, that if it doesn't follow this basic path of this area, any other way will just disappear. So if you try to go anywhere like that, it will basically, okay, this works because I'm on the button. But if I go away from the button and I go down that way, basically, I can't get the menu item. So Elementor should find a way to increase the area that we can basically move downward into the sub menu. So that's another concern that Elementor can look into. So now that we are done with the visual test, the next set of tests is the keyboard testing. And basically we're looking for three things. So one is that we want to be able to identify the navigation menu and the links and the buttons. Two, we want to be able to interact with those buttons and links. And three, we want to have a way to be able to bypass the entire navigation menu. So what do I mean by that? Let me go ahead, let me move away my mouse and start from the top of the page and tab. Basically, we want to be able to use the tab key. So now we get to the first thing, which is we want to be able to have a way to skip the entire repeating content and go straight to the main content area. So when I press either spacebar or enter here, I should directly go to the wealth and business session and be greeted with the main content area. So when I press the tab key again, I should now be able to access the first link within that main content area. So let me press tab key, see that works. Now let me go back to the top of the page. And this time now, we press the tab key and see if we can interact with our navigation menu. So tab, so you see I can identify that that is a link for my logo. I press tab again, I can identify that that's the link for the mega menu. Then if I tab again and okay, this is the drop down. So the drop down icon, I should be able to interact with it either using the space bar or enter key because we're using the button element. So that should trigger the opening and closing of the drop down using either space bar or enter. So space bar works, space bar to close, enter, enter to close. So that is working perfectly. For the list items as well, let me go to one of the top level list item and press the enter key. See, it takes me directly to where I want. So that one works as well. So we test all the links to make sure that they are not broken when we're using the keyboard. So I'll just assume that they're all working well. So let me go back to the navigation menu again. So let's see now, if I open the sub menu, can I tab into the sub menu items? So pressing the tab key. Yes, I can tab into the sub menu items and that works. And I can go through all the list of items. The only problem I've noticed here is that basically it shouldn't trap my focus. I don't think it should trap focus, but once I get to the end, if I press the tab key, 
it takes me back to the first item and I'm stuck in a loop. So I can't exit out of this. The only way I can exit is using the escape key. But that should not be the only way I sh should exit from this menu because this is not a full screen menu. If there is a full screen menu where I cannot interact with anything outside of that menu, then you can trap my focus. But ideally, what should happen is that once I get to the last link and I press the tab key, it should take me to the next menu item and then close the sub menu. So once I press the tab key, I should go to the compare area. I shouldn't be greeted back with the same button and I'm basically stuck in this loop. That is not the right way to go. So that's one thing Elementor should look into that it shouldn't trap my focus because basically I have to press the escape key to exit. Then I can continue moving. And I'm, if I'm here again, basically I'm trapped in that loop. Ideally, once I get to the end, I should go to the next sub menu item and continue like that. You can see it from the Apple website. Let me just show you just to show that I'm not making this up. So you see, I go to the drop down. If I press the tab keys, I finish at the end. The next thing is to go to the next menu item. They don't close the sub menu of the previous one until after you've gone out of the entire menu, then they close the sub menu. So at least that's how they approach it. But for Elementor, they just basically trap your focus, which is not really ideal. You shouldn't trap my focus. Unless it is, like I said, a full screen menu, then you are going to use the roll equal to dialogue or something like that to make us know that you are trapping my focus. So that's it for that one. That's what I noticed as an issue, which hopefully Elementor will fix. Then while I was doing my test with multiple browsers, I noticed another keyboard accessibility concern, which is related to focus outline. So now let me show you what I mean. If I go and tap through, you see there is a focus outline on the link, on each of the links, but when it comes to the button, the outline disappears, but the button itself works. The reason why the focus outline disappears is because Elementor is actually using an invalid text, which only works for WebKit browsers. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go to the product itself, inspect it, and we'll go over to the hover and choose focus visible. Now we'll see that Elementor uses outline, this five pixel auto and focus ring color, but focus ring color only works for WebKit browsers. So it doesn't work for Firefox. The good thing is that there is the browser's settings that now triggers and brings out the color. But for the buttons, Elementor has added another set of styles, which I'll show you now. And that is basically that, let me, Hover over it, so focus visible. See, Elementor added that same outline, whatever, the WebKit focus color ring, which shows up when you're using Chrome, but will not show up when you're using Firefox. And unfortunately, just right underneath it, Elementor had said that the all the properties of the buttons should be on set. So basically, it has removed all the default styling that comes from the browser. And it has also removed some other styles that it added to buttons because this is having a higher specificity so it overrides even the style that is set up for buttons so that is where a problem happens so Elementor needs to make sure that they're using the right color co syntax otherwise it will not work on Firefox browsers so that's it for the keyboard testing the final test is the screen reader test and for that, I'll be using NVDA again. So let me go ahead and open up NVDA. So now NVDA is opened. Let me make sure that I'm within this page. Ice cream menu, Elementor simple testing. So now I'm within the page. So now we'll go over the four ways to navigate to the navigation menu. So I'll start quickly with the landmark regions. So I'll just go straight to the top of the page. Visited link, skip to content. Then use the D key. Banner landmark Davden home visited link. Menu navigation landmark list clickable with seven items current page product visited link. So now the name, instead of using primary, Elementor was using menu. So it doesn't tell us whether it's the primary menu or it is the footer menu or whatever. It just calls it menu. So Elementor need to give us a way to change it from just a menu to 
primary menu or something like that. So that's the first issue. So now let me go back. At least the nav is working. So I will not try with the lists. So go back. Out of list visited link skip to content. Now use the L key to go through by lists. Banner landmark menu navigation landmark list clickable with seven items current page product visited link. So that means it's working using the L key to go through by lists on the page. So now let me go back again, control home. Out of list visited link skip to content. So now I'm on the home again. This time I'm using the tab key. So tab. Banner landmark Davden home visited link. So next in tab again. Menu navigation landmark list clickable with seven items current page product visited link. So yeah, it, it was able to work with all the different ways. The last way is to use the up and down arrow key. I'll test that later. But now let's test that everything is working. So I'll test the top level item. So I'll press either space bar or enter keys. Let me press enter. See the link. Current location. So the link is working. Although it's supposed to have read out the product section, but it didn't read it out. I'm not sure why. You go back up. Out of list visited link skip to con. So now at the top again. This time, let me. Go to the next one. Banner landmark dab menu navigation landmark open product menu button collapse sub menu. So now I'm on the drop down. Let's see if it works with the enter or space bar. This time I'll use space bar. This is the button. Expanded. So it works. Expanded. Collapsed. Expanded. So that works. Now let me see if I can get access into the menu using the tab key. Core features list with six items design and build visited link. So yeah, I can get to the sub menu items using the tab key because Elementor uses JavaScript to move my focus into the sub menu. But if I try to use the other way that people will work with, so let me escape. List clickable with seven items open product menu button collapse sub menu. And this time I'll press the enter key. Expanded. And this time let me see, I try to use the other way using the arrow keys to so up and down arrow to go element by element. Clickable compare. I basically skip the sub menu because sub menu is not there but once I let's keep going down menu but clickable menu but clickable 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 link get out of list heading level three core features so you see it takes me through the entire top level menu items first before I now finally get list with six items visited link design and build so I get there now and I continue total creative control visited link better WooCommerce and so on and so forth using the up and down arrow key. If I'm using the tab key, that will have worked properly. But because not everybody uses a tab key, so we should make sure that the HTML structure is done properly. We should not be relying on JavaScript because the way we should work with web design is that we should be progressive enhancement. So that means start with the proper HTML structure. Make sure your HTML is working to perfection. Then you can add in CSS to add some styling and basic animations. Once you're done that, you can now add in some JavaScript to in put some interactions to make sure that some things open and close, hide, and things like that. Then you can add in some other information to make screen reader users understand when there is an interaction. So add things like area expanded, true or false, which is what is on this button that's telling us expanded collapse is because the area expanded attribute is being changed as the button is interacting using JavaScript. That's why you can see if I go exit. List clickable with seven items open product menu button collapse sub menu. It says button collapsed if I press the space bar or enter key. Expanded. Those means expanded. You see, so that gives you an indication of what's happening because of that area information. So make sure that your HTML first is spotless, then add in some CSS. The JavaScript should just be used to add in some extra features like animations and some kind of interactions. But if the JavaScript is turned off, your website should still be able to be usable. That's why some people go the extra mile and make sure that the menu opens on focus when there is no JS. So they put a kind of class name on the top of the page, which says no JS. And then if there's no JS, everything should open on focus. But when there is some JS active, then the JavaScript will now trigger and open the button on click. So that's what some people do to make sure that their website doesn't break. That's why if you go to somewhere like Mozilla Developer Docs and you disable your JavaScript, 
you see most of the things there will still work because they try to be as inclusive as possible. They don't rely on JavaScript for most of their things to work. Even their menu does not rely on JavaScript. So that's one of the things we need to try to learn. Number one, all of this Avia information and JavaScript, use them to enhance the user experience. They should not be used to replace the HTML and CSS. You should always try to start with HTML and CSS first, then enhance the HTML and CSS using JavaScript and then all of those area information, area live, area current, and all the other information that are there. So those are the things you need to watch out for. The other thing I also noticed is that if you see, when I go to the next menu Core item, features let's... list with six items design and build visited link. So let me exit it. List clickable with seven items open product menu button collapse sub menu. I don't know if you hear this, Ross. What you hear something about current something? Clickable open compare menu. Clickable current page resources visited link. It says current page resources visited link. If I go to the next one. Open resource. Clickable current page templates visited link. It basically tells me that everything is current page, which isn't the reason why we use area current. Let me exit the NVDA. Exit N. Basically, we should only add area current to indicate that that one item among a list of items is the current page. So when it comes to like anchor links, we should, I don't think we should be adding area current. Let me show you what I mean. Let me right click and inspect it. As you can see, first of all, it's adding it to the div rather than the A tag, but it's basically adding area current equal to page because I'm using anchor tags. I'm using like hashtag product and the next one, let's go get to the next list item. It has basically the same thing. I mean, although this one doesn't have a text, that's why. Let's go to the next one. Because that one didn't have any link. But see, the one with the link has an A tag because it has href, which is a same page link. It has area current equal to page, which ideally isn't the use case for area current. Area current just supposed to tell you that within a list of list items, this is the current item that we are on. So basically, if it is the page, then yes. But if it's like anchor tags, I don't think we should be adding area current equal to page. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Please do leave it in the comment section so that we can all learn together. And I would like to hear your thoughts even in the GitHub request that I posted. Put in your inputs so that we can make this thing get better and Elementor can get better because... If we keep saying Elementor is dead or don't worry about Elementor, Elementor doesn't listen, then other people will keep suffering because there are millions of people using this Elementor for their websites. So we should try our best to give our own inputs. If Elementor doesn't listen, then that's on them. Then we can use JavaScript to remediate for places where Elementor is lacking. Like, I'll be honest, the entire drop down menu I use here, everything was done using dynamic shortcodes. I basically created a template and all I did was fed it an array of elements and that's what populated all of these items. That's why you see everything looks the same. Or even the second one has the same thing. They all look alike because I basically just created a template and then I used dynamic shortcodes to populate the links. The reason why I did that is because I wanted to have a ULLI tag if I use a loop grid, Elementor's loop grid doesn't have a ULLI tag. It has a set of divs, so that would not be very good in a mega menu. We need to be able to quickly tell the user that this is a list of items. I know you can use the list item widget, but then we'll not be able to add the area labeled by on it, which will now tell the user that they are on the list of items that are related to the advanced features. Because when a screen reader user now comes to my links here, once it comes to the first link here, it will tell them there are lists of seven items for the core features. So the screen reader user can now know that, okay, I'm on the subheading of core features and there are seven items within that subheading. So you can choose to skip that subheading and go to the next subheading or not. But if we just have a set of divs and some tags that are not semantic HTML, then to make it harder, for a screen reader user to navigate through your mega menu. So that's it for today. 
maybe in a future video i'll show you how i actually created the entire mega menu but those are the checklists and those are the concerns i'll leave a list of the concerns that i currently have within the comments of the video you can add your comments to that section so that maybe the elemental team can look at it and give them some ideas of what users want but most importantly please i would like you to go to the bug report and add your voices to the bug report so that things can get better if you are an accessibility expert please check out the bug report and make your comments there so that's it for today i hope this video has been enlightening and hopefully elementor will get better with accessibility they have a lot of members who are working on accessibility within the team so i'm sure they will be glad to see you putting in your input about accessibility for the team and it's not only to point out the errors I know I mostly pointed out errors in this video, but also tell them things that are doing well. If you see things that are going on well with the menu, write it within that bug report as well. Tell them, okay, this it was working well for me, but this didn't work well. So at least they know what they're doing right and not just only the bad things that they're doing. So that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.